Hello everyone and welcome! In this video I'm going to be explaining the balancing of secondary forces in an engine. Now if you haven't already watched my video on balancing engines or uh, primary forces within an engine balancing primary forces, you may want to check those out first. So secondary engine balance forces, this is balancing of uh, reciprocating mass that causes an imbalance uh, two times per revolution rather than one time per revolution. So for example with your primary forces you've got the piston moving up and down, and that's a primary force. Secondary forces are going to be occurring twice for that same revolution, for that piston moving up once and then down once. So let's figure out where these forces come from. And the way to do this is basically just with the geometry of a piston cylinder engine. So here we have um, just a basic, here's our crankshaft, our connecting rod, and our piston. Um, we're going to be looking at the geometry of that. So we're going to say that the circle that that uh, connecting rod rotates on has a one uh, a diameter of one. We'll just say the units don't matter here, so just one. Um, and then the connecting rod has a length of two. So at top dead center, this means that this whole uh, device here is going to have a height of three, uh, and at bottom dead center, a height of two. So we want to find out what is its height halfway up. Uh, and so what we're going to do is we're going to say, okay, well we've got 0.5 here, we've got two here, and we want to find x. So Pythagorean theorem says um, if, you, if you have a right angled triangle, you can take one side, square that, plus the square of the other side, and that'll give you the, uh, that'll be equivalent to the hypotenuse squared. So 0.5x, 0.5 squared plus x squared equals 2 squared. So x equals the square root of 2 squared minus 0.5 squared. So x equals 1.9365. And this is interesting because it's not 2. And obviously it wouldn't be 2 because this is 2. But the reason I say that is, if you add this to the height, that means this uh, height right here is 2.4365. Uh, so you've got 0.5 plus the 1.9365, and that gives you the total height, and this is going to be at a 90 degree rotation. So why is that interesting? Well, if you look at the height versus time, you can see that when you're at top dead center, here you are at a height of 3. When you rotate that crank 90 degrees, then you're at a height of 2.4365. Now that's not 2.5, that's not halfway between uh, top dead center, and then when you hit the bottom dead center, you're at 2. So what's happened is, the piston has traveled a greater distance uh, as it's rotated the 90 degrees from top dead center to 90 over than it has from 90 degrees to bottom dead center. And the same occurs on its way back up. So it travels a shorter distance in the same amount of time when it rotates to 270 degrees and then from 270 all the way back up to top dead center it travels a greater distance in the same amount of time. So what does that mean if the distance traveled is greater in the same amount of time? Well that means that the piston is moving faster during that rotation. So what's happening is here you've got your connecting rod and as it rotates on this top 180 degrees the piston's going to be traveling up and down faster than the piston when it gets to the bottom 180 degrees. And this is what creates your secondary imbalance. So what this does is you have a stronger upward force because the piston's moving faster up, and then you have a weaker downward force because the piston's moving slower when it moves down. So what does this look like if you graph it? Well, we already know from our previous videos what the primary forces look like. You've got this simple curve as the piston goes up and then down and then up and you have this curve. Well, because of these secondary forces, we know we have a stronger upward force at top dead center and a weaker downward force at bottom dead center. So our force, our sum of our forces is going to look more like this. So at top dead center, it's going to be a bit higher, and then it's going to be a bit lower at bottom dead center, and then once again a bit higher. So what would cause that? Well, the secondary force, so what the graph of this is going to look like, occurring twice per uh, full revolution of the crankshaft, that's why it's called secondary force. So it goes up, down, up, down, up, and so it's up at the bottom uh, when this piston is at the bottom dead center, and that's what's creating that imbalance and causing the sum of the forces to be a little bit uh, smaller than they would be otherwise um, if it was just that piston basically moving up and down on a vertical plane. So. Depending on the engine layout, you can balance out these forces uh, using additional pistons or counterweights. Um, and I'm going to get into some various types of engines um, and how they, how they work that out. So if you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Thanks for watching.